For those of you who came in a little bit early, uh, my staff back there has put some clipboards with uh, uh, you, that you can sign up to get anything from the Idaho GOP. So on your way out, if you didn't have the opportunity to sign up, we'd sure appreciate you doing that. Uh, just give us your name, give us your uh, email, and then also tell us what county you're from. That will help us in some future information going out. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you to all the legislators who have taken the time uh, to get here, uh, to hear what some of these resolutions are that we just got passed in our winter meeting. My name is Dorothy Moon, and I am the Idaho Republican Chairwoman. And we... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We've had a pretty busy week. Uh, the start of the year, we came out gangbusters, and over the weekend, we had our winter meeting. It's the first one that we as staff and new chair and executive committee have had the opportunity to put on. It, w it went off uh, pretty well, actually, and we've got a lot of good things passed. We did run out of time because of a hard stop at the Riverside Inn, and uh, those resolutions, for those of you who have submitted them, they will be brought back up in the summer. There are a couple of resolutions that didn't uh, get, get heard within the entire State Central Committee, and there's a couple that are timely, and I will talk about those in a minute that I would ask the legislature to try to bring forward prior to the summer meeting. But I'd like to start out, first of all, uh, giving you a little speech. We're going to then recognize a few people, and then we'll get into the resolutions and the past resolutions that we have passed, which are still applicable for two years once they've been passed, okay? So, some Republicans like to brag about supermajorities in each chamber of the legislature. Quietly, there are lots of Republicans who talk about how the party's resolutions are just scraps of paper, to be given almost as much credence as you would junk mail. Something is wrong with this, and how we can run super majorities in the state house and in the state senate and not have Republican members who ignore the will of the party. That changes today. <laughs> the Idaho Republican Party with its vast grassroots network makes the legislat legislative super majorities possible now. We want our priorities addressed, not after the lobbyists get their way, but it's the first order of business in this building. Yeah. As such, I'm going to be holding meetings for concerned citizens and party members to provide a roadmap to ensure the legislature obeys the will of the party. That is to ensure the legislature turns campaign sound bites into actual legislative proposals. For, for those who move on our party's priorities, we will offer access to our networks and clear communications advantages. For those who don't, well, hell hath no fury like the chairwoman scorned. So we will make sure that the people are heard. And what are those legislative priorities? We have a list of re resolutions authored by, voted on, and approved by our grassroots. We will circulate the list shortly after today's meeting. Today, I'm pleased to introduce our two legislative liaisons. We've got Representative Julie Young and Senator Glenita Ziderville, and I'll give them a minute to get up and speak about their uh, new roles with the Idaho GOP as legislators. Um, Representative Julianne Young is of Blackfoot and will serve as our House liaison entering her third term. Representative Young is a respected voice for Idaho families and children. Her record is stellar. In her first term representing the Magic Valley, uh, Senator Glenita Ziderville will serve as the Republican Party's liaison to the state Senate. Prior to her service in the state Senate, Senator Ziderville earned a reputation as a committed community leader, helping strengthen citizen engagement all through Southern Idaho, not just in Twin Falls. The role of the legislative liaison is to ensure that this party's resolutions, drafted and supported by everyday citizens, are brought to the attention of the legislators are, and are advanced in their respective communities, committees, excuse me. As I've said before, we are confident that Young, Representative Young and Senator Ziderville will do an excellent job in their supporting the voice of the people and we appreciate their dedication advancing the interests of the Republican Party. <laughs> uh, 
And in closing, I want to be clear, we are here to be a resource to the legislature. As a pop popularly elected branch of government, the legislature is accountable to the people, not special interest. Even if those special interests do all the hard work of writing their bills and providing supportive research, the people have spoken. And now it's time for the legislature to do the people's bidding. In short, I want everyone to know that we will be here for the entire session, offering a helping hand, but also to have a watchful eye on every Republican member. So, with that being said, let's talk about the resolutions that have moved forward through the committee. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that first. I want to give you guys the first opportunity. I do want to have, I do want to have our house liaison uh, uh, to come on up, uh, Julianne Young, to at least introduce herself. And uh, if you have seen her in action here in the house, whenever she gets up, to present any bill. I've never seen any finer presentation, the thoughtfulness and the considerations and considering all so sorts of uh, collateral damage that may could occur with the bill, she has really have, she has it ironed out. So we're very fortunate to have her in this position. Julianne, come on up for a few minutes. Well, thank you so much, Dorothy. And um, it's an honor to be here with you today. I love our founding documents. The preamble to our Constitution begins, we the people. And the Declaration of Independence begins, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. The idea of self-governance is right at the core, at the beginning of the foundations of America. One of the things that I love the most about political parties, and there's a lot of things to not love, <laughs> is that it gives us, as ordinary people, an opportunity to participate in a very grassroots way to express our concerns and our ideas and to do that through an organized process that lets us be thoughtful and deliberate. Now that doesn't mean that it's always easy, but I'm so grateful to be part of this process. I'm grateful to work to represent the concerns and interests of the people of the state of Idaho particularly those who support the values which are found in our Republican platform, and I'm looking forward to a wonderful year. Thank you, Julianne. She's going to be great. You're wonderful. Glenita, Glenita Ziderville will be representing the Senate side, so this is the face to remember. <laughs> And my name is Senator Glenita Ziderveld. And to help you to remember my name, my slogan during my campaign was, we need a Glenita. So that should help you remember my first name. And guess what? You guys got a Glenita. Um, I am honored and blessed to be part of this Republican Party and this uh, class of freshmen and just this session. Um, I think great things are ahead for us. I, I see a lot of strong uh, faith in our uh, House, in our Senate, that is gonna be bringing great things. Uh, one thing though that I would like to bring forth is the communication between the legislature and the citizens. I feel like that has been missing. I feel like a lot of our citizens are not being heard and it's time for us legislators to listen, to listen. To really hear the voices of the people that we serve. I know I've been on a long, almost year-long job interview seeking your vote to get this job. And so I'm gonna work hard for you. I'm gonna listen to you. I wanna be the greatest lia liaison for you guys as possible. And I think if working together, uh, we can actually bring a lot of good things, not only to our party, but to the state. We need to work hard because I feel like we are, are holding on by a thread. And I think that we need to do everything that we can to preserve. And you know, our founding fathers said it was a constitutional republic if we can keep it. It's time that we sacrifice our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor just as they did to keep our republic. And so I'm honored and blessed to be in this position as a freshman. So thank you so much, and thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
So those are the faces. Uh, they can be reached. Uh, you can go to the Idaho GOP web, uh, website, and they will have their contact information there, as, also, as well as the legislative website. Uh, all information, your office number, your cell, or home number, also addresses in which to uh, email and hard mail to. Okay, so let's get looking at some of these resolutions that just passed. We had a pretty hectic meeting. We had to address with a, uh, an issue that took about an hour, and then uh, we did uh, get to have a little fun. Uh, we uh, got into the recognition of our Hall of Fame awards, and I would like to just run through them quickly in, in case you recognize any of these names, but when you are in the Republican Party as a precinct committee man, or as a volunteer, or as a legislator, or even as you know, just, just uh, the boots on the ground folks that are making all the phone calls, you aren't ignored. Uh, we tried to give out awards, and there's a group of people that have a list of submitted names, and our uh, outstanding precinct committee person is Beverly Gannett, and she is up from the Kootenai County area, and she's done yeoman's work uh, for, that, for that area and for Kootenai County. Uh, our outstanding Republican worker was Kirsten Lucas. I don't think she's here. Uh, Kirsten is from Canyon County. And when it came to door knocking and helping to organize folks, I mean, unbelievable amount of work. Up north in Shoshone County, Linda Yergler, she was the outstanding regional county or legislative district chairman. Uh, she has pretty much taken over the, uh, most of the county offices are now Republican. And so she's worked very hard with her team and for a small county, again, very much involved. Our, she's a wonderful woman, I wish she was still here. Our outstanding Republican legislator is, was Julianne Young. Uh, so our representative, which was a unanimous vote that she has worked very hard to uh, keep our Republican values strong in, the, in these chambers. So I uh, appreciate everything she's done as well. The most valuable person, if you've ever seen Daniel Murphy, He's a fellow who walks around with a camera and sometimes he'll hold you at bay. I need a five, more pic five more pictures, hang on. And you're thinking, Daniel, come on. We're not in a wedding party right now. We've got to get to work. But he, uh, he is everywhere taking photos and he was recognized as the most valuable person. Yes, he's fantastic. He would have been here right now, but he's over at Ada County for the swearing in. So he's over there taking pictures. Our Lifetime Achievement Award went to Joanne Wood. If any of you knew Representative Wood, she was a stalwart, conservative, uh, constitutional representative for years. And I was really surprised when I saw her name was not on that plaque. She and Lenore Barrett, who was from Custer County in my neck of the woods, they were good friends. And they were like the tag team constitutional duo for the longest of time. Uh, we very much surprised her. She thought she was just here for Raul's inauguration of whom she's related to. And uh, she uh, came into that room and when she said, when we said 1982, her face went, oh, it's for me? It was so sweet. So uh, I want you to know we're, we're very happy with our Hall of Fame awards. Okay, now to get to the nitty gritty. Okay, so on the resolutions, the ones that passed um, within the time allotment that we had, uh, usually the resolutions committee chair, who, who was at this time Christy Zitto, they come before the body and they will present in its entirety the rule, resolutions that passed. So um, she brought them forward, ran through them, uh, then someone divided the question. These are tactics sometimes to delay, especially when you know how hard stop to maybe get to a certain, certain one of these resolutions. But you know what, we plugged along and I think got some of the important ones that need to be addressed. And again, as I said, some of them that did not get through, they will be addressed anyway. Because they have been brought up in one manner or another at the previous convention or previous winter meeting. So I think we've got our charge. Um, the one, of course, uh, that I think is very important and I hold pretty dear is uh, a resolution regarding ranked choice voting. Uh, we do not want ranked choice voting in this state. And, and most of you uh, know that I did run for um, Secretary of State, so election issues were big with me. And this is one that was kind of questionable where all candidates stood. So we've got to make sure our voices are heard within this building that we do not want rank choice voting. 
Uh, this one will be coming forward. We, we will see uh, which legislator. I know already there's a lot of election integrity issues coming forward, like the identification that was brought up in the summer convention, which dealt with the removal of college ID. And of course, college ID, all it has is a number and a name. It does not have age. It does not have address. It doesn't have any discernible information which is really needed to vote in this state. So um, that, that will be coming forward as well. So those are uh, two election integrity issues from current meeting to past meetings. The ranked choice voting issue, which is major because they are working hard. In fact, some of you might know that Georgia was actually contemplating bringing in ranked choice voting just because of the recent election. You don't do that, <laughs> you just don't do that. Okay, uh, the second resolution that was passed was uh, 2023-6, and I guess I should say those numbers for you, those of you who have these documents, but the resolution was 2023-3 uh, on ranked choice voting. The resolution regarding minor sex reassignment. This was also brought up at a previous meeting, but just to get it down, to, uh, I'll take it down to therefore be it resolved. The Idaho State Republican Party affirm our support for legislation that would protect gender-confused minors from procuring puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and sex reassignment surgeries. Be it further resolved uh, that the chairman of the Idaho State Party directs the appointed legislative liaisons to communicate the position of the party on this issue to fellow Republican members in the Idaho legislature, and then hopefully get it codified into law. Uh, this was presented in resolutions committee and this was then passed on the floor. And again, this was uh, also passed in a previous meeting. So that is the second resolution uh, that I'm pretty sure legislation is moving on. The third one isn't really uh, so much legislation as it is a statement from the Idaho Republican Party. It's a resolution asking the practice of holding bills in the drawer by committee chairman to be stopped. <laughs> Uh, whereas the bills written that would benefit the Idaho people, but these bills are held in drawers by the committee chairman, never to be seen by committee members. So the people not, are not being represented in this practice must be ended and every bill should be heard. So more or less, if it gets into committee, if it's not a good idea, it won't make it through committee. What does it harm, you know, to take five or 10 minutes to give it a hearing? And I think that's the real question. We've seen a lot of bills. This is in my six years and of my being a representative, um, and a lot of bills were heard. I mean, were not they were held up and not heard. And it was unfortunate because they were really good bills. Because at least from the Republican Party standpoint, they were very good bills. The last resolution to pass, and this one was a squeaker. It came in. Uh, it was pulled from. Uh, all of those that had been divided, and a representative from Eastern Idaho was very concerned about a four-lane highway in Island Park. So Idaho Transportation Department has proposed a four-lane highway to help with truck traffic and so forth. Uh, th these folks wanted this resolution to come forward to show their displeasure with having the four-lane highway come through. And it did get passed through uh, the committee and through the body uh, those are our four right there. Now, as far as the resolutions of the past, uh, we have had um, uh, in 2022 at the convention, uh, we had a couple of anti-crossover resolutions that passed. The affirming Idaho is a second amendment, sanctuary state, and reaffirming red, red flag laws is unconstitutional. The Idaho Children's Bill of, Hel Bill of Rights, excuse me, passed and uh, let's see, and a resolution to affirm that Idaho GOP platform that American combat troops should not be used as world policemen. An <laughs> Another one that passed in 2022 summer meeting at the convention was safer internet access for children. Uh, we have to be careful about we're letting our kids get their hands on. Uh, ESG, anti-discrimination resolution, also came forward. We do know that our treasurer in this state, uh, Julie Ellsworth, is currently working uh, and getting involved, very much involved in the dangers of ESG influencing lenders and so forth. Um, a resolution was also passed to privatize Idaho Public Television. A resolution to further secure Idaho elections, which was 
the uh, ID, um, the IDs of uh, our college kids, our college students uh, being tighter, and then crossover voting again was brought up. So these, these are a lot of the same theme, uh, but anyway, this is uh, definitely uh, the path that we need to be moving forward. As far as uh, the other resolutions that were passed in 2022 uh, meeting, uh, again, the same tenor, we had recognition of some folks, uh, reaffirming that parents have the primary responsibility to oversee and their, choose their children's education. Yes. So, so I do know there are a lot of people here who promote school choice. Our platform promotes school choice, and we want school choice. Um, so no matter what, I know, uh, you know, everybody's been shifted around. Uh, we have committee members, some I'm not familiar with, as running committees. Uh, we have other people in different, uh, you know, instead of being with EET, now they're on resources or something. So you need to go onto the Idaho legislative website and make sure you know who are running those committees. Um, because I'm going to have to talk to the chair uh, of, of resources, Mendive, and the vice chair, chair is Charlie Shepard. I don't know if Charlie's here. But anyway, those two I need to speak to because one of our resolutions that we didn't move through deals with water resources. And it was presented by Oahe County. So even though it didn't get a hearing, there's some activity in Congress that we probably need to have some sort of statement from our legislature of how we feel about this water issue. So that, that is something that will happen even though we didn't have uh, the hearing. We had the hearing in committee, it got passed through, but we did not get it through the full body. Okay, um, but anyway, back to the school choice. Uh, there are a lot of folks involved. I'm seeing them already. <laughs> right here they're all over we have a couple of ladies from Haley who drove all the way out here are very concerned about school choice as well so it is a hot issue it didn't get passed last year because it got held in the education committee I brought forward a school choice bill which would have allowed education savings accounts and I will say right now because I've already heard um, talking points going out that the Idaho Republican Party supports vouchers no we don't okay we support educational savings accounts. So when that red herring pops up, you can say, Chairwoman Moon said for the Idaho Republican Party, we support educational savings accounts, not vouchers. Two totally different animals. We're not just going to hand money out to folks to go buy big screen TVs and laptops. We are going to have an accounting system where if there's a submitted tuition bill, a submitted anything that is applied for textbooks or what have you, go straight to this child's name within Idaho's staffing. So that's part of how that's going to work. So anyhow, um, the school choice, we will be tracking that very closely. I do know that Capital Clarity will be continuing here in this chamber right here. <laughs> It will be going on every Thursday. Uh, another group will be running it, but uh, the ex-Lieutenant Governor, McGeehan, she will be uh, involved as well um, you know, with, with this other group. So you will have a lot of opportunities to hear about the movement of choice in education. You will have a lot of opportunity and also uh, election integrity issues, a lot of opportunity in property tax relief, uh, whether grocery sales tax relief will finally get to the governor's desk. And I believe that is one of the most important issues that we can get moving right away. That has been going on for way too many years. So that's kind of a summary. Now I do, I am aware there are a lot of, leg I, here comes Charlie Shepard, I just mentioned him. I told him I was gonna be talking to you here later about a water issue. Um, can everybody who is a legislator please stand so everyone can see who's very interested in hearing your voices and who have had, we're lucky enough to have time to get here. Look at that, wow. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, believe it or not, a few years ago, we would not have had that many legislators standing. I am excited to have just seen that. So that's, that's a great sign to see how involved you are in wanting to meet with the folks. So all of you who just saw them stand up, if you see your legislator, make sure you grab them uh, on the way out. The uh, other, I guess we'll take some 
questions. Um, if anybody has any questions about any of the rules and resolu uh, resolutions, what you have to understand are on these rules and resolutions, they're not Dorothy Moons. The ranked choice voting was definitely a concern of mine. Yes, I did move that one forward. Um, election integrity and ID, yes, I did move that one forward. But these rules and resolutions are written by the people of Idaho in the Republican Party. These are people who have a concern. So when people say that the executive committee or the chairwoman did this, this, or this, that is so untrue. Uh, and people know if I say I brought it forward, I brought it forward. A lot of these I did not even read until they were put in order for the committees. Um, so, and that's kind of my job. I want to see how it all plays out. I want to see what the folks in our uh, state central committee want to see move forward. So uh, I just want to be really clear on that. Um, but if you do have some good ideas, we do have another meeting this summer and get with your respective central committees in your counties and you discuss them there because they have to be approved by the central committee or legislative district or me. I can actually approve something to be heard as well. So then we put them in the hopper. Uh, sadly, because so many resolutions were not heard because of that cute little division of all, the, of, all of the resolutions, um, we will uh, be moving all of those to the summer meeting. So if you did not get your resolution heard, it has already made it to the state central committee floor, that's where it's gonna be picked up at. It will not have to go through the respective committees again. Okay, if that makes sense. All right, so I'll open up for questions. And if the legislators here have answers, if you are aware, if you're carrying something or moving something through uh, legislative services office, let us know because then they'll know who to reach out to in the event that these are already started, okay? Anybody have any questions or anybody want to comment on any of these resolutions so far? Yes. Um, I was just wondering, did, what did they do with the uh, Idaho Young Republican members being part of the committee? Okay, that's one of the rules. Uh, one of the rules changes that was proposed, uh, we, it, it came down to where it was being tabled until the summer meeting. So there'll be more information that will be provided on both sides. And the state central committee will be the arbiter and final decision maker in that issue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, the resolutions that didn't pass, can we find those on the state party website? The ones that didn't pass, the ones that are posted on the state party website are the ones that did pass. However, you, we do have them and we can send the entire packet of the ones that were proposed and voted on if you want those. Do you have all of them? Uh, no, I don't have all of them. Okay, well, we, we, we can give you that information. But, but in a couple of days, our secretary, Maria Nate, will have all the amendments or any changes or you know typo corrections. Those will be made and then we have full copies. So like the four I just spoke of, they will be posted as well as the rules. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, you referenced a little bit earlier um, water issues. I was wondering if you could give us a little bit more detail on what Congress is considering and what the party's concerns are. Tammy, do you, I don't know who had this water. Uh, was that you? Yes. Do you want to come, can you speak to that? Well, I can briefly. Briefly. I want the people who brought them forward to come and speak. <laughs> Thanks, Tammy. Do you need a copy of that or do you? I've got a copy. You've got it. Look yeah. at you. Yeah. You're ready. Okay. Hi, I'm Tammy Payne, a Waihee County Republican Central Committee Chair. Um, this is an issue that was settled in 2007 in the courts. We've got ranchers and farmers that have got grazing rights um, that the water actually goes with. Um, the state of Idaho owns that water. Um, we are sovereign over that water. And that was granted or confirmed in 2007 um, in um, the Idaho Supreme Court. Long and short, we've had a couple of ranchers um, that have been named in a suit along with the state of Idaho saying the state no longer has the right to that water. The federal governor, or the federal government, excuse me, um, claims um, uh, sovereignty over all Idaho's water. Um, that will kill our egg and um, ranching community, farming community. So what this is about is that we're asking our legislature to say to Washington, D.C., and also our congressional delegation, tell the federal government hands off, we are sovereign Idaho, and we're asking actually um, our representatives back um, in D.C. to actually impeach 
um, the Attorney General over this um, because they're overstepping constitutional bounds. So, in general, not, that's just a nutshell. If you want more, you're welcome to give us a call. We've got all kinds of legal documentation we can bore you with, but that's it in a nutshell. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, you. Madam Chair. It's so great to have an instant uh, yeah, experts pop up out of the audience. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, another question? Yes. Yeah. So I have a very compelling background in education, and I want to be a resource for the legislators. What's the best thing I can do? Are you, like, are you still a teacher? Yes. In I own my own business teaching math online to homeschooled kids, and ESAs are the way to go. Thank you. I appreciate uh, your support on that. It, what would be uh, great if you can attend the committee, education committee meetings, when these issues are brought up and provide some expert testimony as an educator and especially in math or online. These meetings are posted, again, on the legislative website. So you can go into each committee. You can see their agenda. They're supposed to be posted within a 24 hours. Actually, you know, sometimes it might be a little bit tighter than that. But if you can just try to keep abreast of that uh, and maybe get in with some of these groups. Um, I know that, again, these ladies right here and maybe get on their link up. Okay, perfect. Get up on their link up to where when there's an issue because they will know first and they will be scouring the legislative website for this information. And then it, they could get you here, especially if you're, are you in town? I near Idaho City. Perfect. Okay, great. Fantastic. Okay, well, thank you for offering your help on that. Yes, ma'am. Oh, hang on. I got too many people talking. Oh, go ahead. Oh. Do you have the resolutions committee members listed? Yes. Yes, the resolutions committee uh, is listed, and anybody who did not send, uh, you know, did not make it with their alternate was also updated. So you'll know who they are. Yes. You know, one thing you have to remember in what I stated in my opening statement is that for the longest time these resolutions have been ignored. And while they've been ignored, legislators have continued to prepare RSs and new bills through this body. So that issue is huge, and what you need to do is go get with your representatives and let them know that this is something that needs to happen. Now this has been attempted before, so we just need to keep pushing it. Just keep pushing it. So just because it wasn't an Idaho GOP resolution because we couldn't get to it, or there was, you know, for some reason, it does not stop any legislator from moving that through. Okay? Yes, Steve. Those resolutions got moved too far into the summer meeting. There were a pack of them that the Correct. committee didn't get to. And I think that was requested if I didn't receive Oh, I, th I thought it was to move the election date of your. Yeah, that one wasn't because there was like, what, 37 and only 17? Actually, we had about 70 resolutions, but a lot of them were duplicates. So, yeah, they, we, they were removed or thinned down. Yes. But bring it forward with your legislator, and then uh, whatever respective committee it needs to go through, state affairs probably, um, find them. Tammy, I mean, sorry, River. Senator Nichols, I'm sorry. You keep changing your name on me, Senator Nichols. Could you, who's on the committee, or who's going to be receiving the information? Thank you for the information, Senator. Uh, anybody else have any questions? Yes, sir. 
You indicated in the resolution for voting that it was going to nullify the college IDs as a form of ID. Has, does Idaho have any intentions of going into a voter ID, meaning they have to qualify people like they did for the star card and they have a separate number so those who can vote do vote and those who are not supposed to vote can't vote? Uh, that's something that's been considered. I know with all of the election integrity issues we've had since 2020, uh, there's been all sorts of ideas. Uh, the voter ID card in, in um, let's see, that was the, the voter ID card, of course, would, would have been considered in the bill that I brought forward with multiple changes to election, uh, election uh, law. And it, it would have allowed a voter ID card such as that to be given to people who did not have a driver's license. Um, so then eventually, who knows if it would segue over to that, but right now a driver's license is, you know, pretty much uh, the main type of ID. Anybody can get a driver's license whether they're a legal alien, a legal citizen or not. Yes, and Representative Mitchell, is he in here? Um, last year he brought one up that would have been working with Idaho Transportation to have some sort of identifier on that license that said whether they were a legal uh, citizen or not. So uh, th there's a lot of things in the works. Uh, the, pr the sad thing is a, a bill can come in with a lot of teeth, but by the time it gets through all the sausage making, it's just being a, a gummy and everybody. We've lost our teeth. And that's what kind of happened to that, uh, that bill that was being moved through last year. And then they also come down as being held hostage for negotiation at the end of the year. So, so the election integrity ones are always pretty exciting. But no, the voter ID is something that has been considered. And, and it might be being brought forward. I have not met with all the legislators to see what they're bringing. But it is an option. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Okay. They are. Great. And th these are some friends from Avonmore who came all the way over here for that. Thank you. Not that far of a drive, but it's still nice uh, for you to come out here. Because um, it's always hard to find parking as well around here. Uh, but it's true, those uh, newsletters that come out from the legislators, uh, please watch for them. I do know that Heather Scott is probably one of the best uh, writer of a newsletter I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm not saying she started the practice, but she definitely has a huge presence in her district from her newsletters. Now, a lot of times legislators get busy, and I have heard complaints that sometimes they'll receive the exact same newsletter from their two representatives and from their one senator, and they're thinking, why do I keep receiving the same thing? So I'm telling you, legislators do get very busy. Sometimes it's easier to just kind of grab some of the updates for that week and put them on there. And if they have time to personalize them, that's really nice. But again, don't fault them because you might get three that look identical, but just know that the ones who really do take time, and I'm, I'm telling you Representative Scott is the best at it I've ever seen, um, to make sure to tailor make it for your constituency and not tailor make it for Boise uh, constituency. Okay, so that's what you, we need to watch out for. Heather, uh, Representative Scott. Okay, thank you for that information. I did not know that. Amy? What is the personal expense to the legislators for something like that? Is there going to be another, an added expense to them for that? It, it depends on the size of their newsletter. Um, it could cost up to $600 a, a month for that service, depending on how many emails you have. So, um, yeah, that, that's maybe something that legislators may want to work through the GOP at some point okay. to, to fill that void that 
Thank you, Representative. I didn't know that happened. Uh, Senator Nichols, were you going to add on to that? And, and um, Representative Scott, I want you to speak this to this too. So their, their, your email, when it goes into the senators or any representative in this room, that is totally theirs. And when those lists get compromised um, because of this sharing of those that, the newsletters, uh, that's a huge problem. Is that why you think they got rid of that or no? I don't know, but, but it is a problem because when we, when we ask for your email, we keep those lists. And when I hear that they have been shared uh, inappropriately, we have we have a huge concern. But uh, I just want you to be aware that everybody, most everybody I know in the legislature, are really good about keeping their list secure. Okay. All right. Yes. Oh, Governor got my list. <laughs> When were these emails sent out? How long ago? How long ago were they sent out? I've been doing this for two years. Every month, I email out to anybody that I get a newsletter. My my representatives have never emailed me back once. So I'm. I'm Was it before July 16th or after July 16th? Both. Both. Okay. I Oh, I see a bunch of people circling you right now. I think you just got all the work you want. Thank you for that. Thank you for the offer. Okay, I do appreciate that. Judy, I mean, represent Boyle. Okay, uh, you just heard it from one of our most senior members in the House. Um, so we're going to have to fix that. Your email should be secure and only yours. Amy. The other thing is, I, for over a year, maybe two, I'm receiving emails now from the Democratic legislators. So they have received, somehow gotten mine. Yes, okay, so Amy up front said she's now getting emails from Democratic legislators. The list sharing is illegal. You cannot be taking people's list and giving them away or selling them. And, you know, we need to start an investigation into that because I'm getting a lot of complaints of some Idaho GOP things, and now all of a sudden national, or they're coming after them like crazy. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we've got to start checking into this. This is highly inappropriate. Yeah, you know, all we talk about is cybersecurity, and we can't seem to get a grip on it here. They didn't get it from me. No, they did get it from me. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, did you all hear the question? Is anybody working on uh, exemptions for college college kids or yeah, upper you know high school Public and private? And private. Yes. Is anybody? Uh, I know that we have a health freedom, um, a lot of health freedom folks in here that uh, we have been moving legislation through. 
<clears throat> excuse me, but currently I don't, you know, vaccines, since right now we have, we're kind of out of the COVID dilemma, um, things have definitely waned a little bit. Uh, at least in our military branches. So um, I, I don't know who would be carried Oh, t Senator Nichols, she's. So just to answer, and I don't know if it covers everything that you're looking at, I know there are some pieces of legislation that are being brought forward in regards to discrimination based on vaccine status, and also for um, uh, students, uh, K through whatever, um, to be able to uh, not have to uh, opt into doing that. And then military Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you for the question, and I'm not sure because I'm no longer a legislator, but I do know that as far as ARPA fund, the ARPA funds go and the exorbitant amount that has been uh, spent on engineering projects uh, around this state, my husband is an engineer, and when we see that how many of these engineering firms are getting um, quite a bit of money uh, for doing some of these projects and the amount of money going to all these municipalities, I think the uh, taxpayer would be alarmed uh, at how quickly it's being spent up. The, uh, as far as education and facilities, that would be a facility committee uh, that you know you would might want to attend and voice your concerns there. But it is a problem. Um, you know, our school boards a lot more uh, a lot of, a lot more of the folks, even some of them in here, have been running for those positions. And we've actually you know brought forward uh, in our uh, resolutions that you know now have to affiliate as Republican or Democrat in a lot of these minor what people consider minor seats, but they're not minor seats. These are big positions that folks need to understand how they lean politically uh, on certain issues. So this is um, a problem. Uh, we can't be denying kids uh, affordable, you know, or public education because that's what we do as a state. A huge part of our budget goes toward education. But as far as uh, the buildings and denying planning and zoning, um, you know, uh, any type of requirement for them to get started on a subdivision is unfortunate. Uh, people come in hoping to develop and especially if there's a need for housing and there's a need for housing all over Especially a lot of the lower income housing folks need but uh, that is something you'd have to go and start attending some of the meetings and uh, Talk to some JFAC members. That would probably be a good idea, too Okay Any other questions? Yes, I'm sorry <laughs> Uh-huh Sometimes our central committee doesn't 
to form the grassroots conservative candidates as well as they could. And uh, previous leadership to the state had the same kind of trend when it came to local conservative candidates and supporting them. Um, I know there's a there's a limitation of what the state party can do to, insert, to uh, support grassroots uh, campaigning at the precinct level, but is there anything that, that in the works or anything that the state committee can do that uh, kind of prop us up a little bit to give us a little bit more steam so we can get out and support our candidates? Uh, thanks for the question. Um, you, you know, the thing is you vote them out. You know, that's kind of how the Republican form of government works, is that if they're doing a bad job, you have to vote them out. And um, if they're not being responsive, it goes all the way from the precinct committee person all the way up to legislative district chairs and all the way up to our legislator, legislature right here. If they're not representing you, then you need to get your voice heard to all of your neighbors and all of your community and let them know that they're not representing your values. So uh, that's where it really falls. I mean, uh, the only re the way we can get involved is the state party if there's been a rule violation. Uh, I am big on following rules, and if we don't follow rules, I will call them out on it. If I'm given a grievance where they weren't following rules, I will call them out on it. Um, but you can't just file a grievance saying, I don't like the chair because they never recognized me in a meeting. That's not enough. Um, so anyway, that you know, follow the rules. Look at your rules. And surprisingly, a lot of folks uh, from the PC level up, they don't understand the hierarchy. They might have just been put in because a friend said, hey, you need to become a PC because we need your vote at the summer meeting. But never really understand how important that position is in getting out the vote, on talking to your neighbors on how they feel about issues, and conveying that to the legislators that represent you. Um, so we're going to be doing some education around the state. Uh, I will have staff. We have a we have had a great fundraiser where if we raised a hundred thousand by the end of January, fifty thousand dollar donation will come into us. Uh, we'll be working on a lot of outreach, and this is the kind of thing we need to do if we don't have our base understanding how we work we're not going to work so um, i'm very excited uh, about a couple of our programs coming forward we have a hispanic outreach program we're going to be going for those undecideds and we're also going to make sure people understand the rules being a teacher by trade i'm a rule follower being a girl who attended catholic schools I was a real big real follower. So anyway, I, uh, anyway, so it's pretty important um, we follow the rules, um, and I will make sure people do. But uh, you know, if anybody has any concerns, and you know, I'll be meet, you know, we we do meet with the chairman uh, on a case. Well, I have not met with the chairman uh, for Ada County in quite a while, but we will be meeting here pretty soon. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, this is not going to be the first and last meeting. Uh, I will be holding these uh, periodically. Uh, we do have capital. I, we, I, I understand that capital clarity will be here at the same time. Oh, I've got a question here. Go ahead. I'm Rocky Weiner from out of Hawaii County. And I, this is not really a question. This is a statement. I don't like Ron McCann. I will not give to the RNC until she's gone. So that's, and I've emailed you that fact. Uh, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, and I got a really nice uh, pound cake uh, from Ron McDaniel. I got a two-pound box of C's chocolates from Harmeet. I'm waiting for those pillows to come in. I am. I could. I could really like. Some, I'd like those pillows. I haven't tried one yet. But, but. Anyway, um, I appreciate those comments. I do want everyone to know who has reached out to me about Harmeet Dillon. Uh, I have received thousands, thousands of emails of support, um, uh, and I have discussed uh, Ron, with Ronna McDaniel. Uh, we, we haven't spoke about this issue on the phone, but I have seen many of her emails coming out uh, in what she's been up to. But um, I think uh, when we get to the meeting, it's from October, I'm sorry, January 24th through the 27th. The 27th is the vote. 
Uh, I will be down there for that meeting. I will be taking my executive director, Kira, who's standing up against the door in the brown jacket. She will be there to make sure I make all my meetings because it's a pretty tight schedule down there. But believe me, uh, your words have not fallen on deaf ears. But one thing, my vote is my vote. And I will never tell anybody what my vote is. Um, I think people can kind of figure I'm a grassroots gal. I guess that's all I'm going to say. Otherwise, I wouldn't be in here in this meeting room with you. So I think most people already know where I stand. Um, now, where our other two stand, I do, I do know that they originally signed up a, a letter in support of Rana. And we have three votes in, the, in this state of the 168, the chair, national committee man, and committee woman. Uh, anybody who has called our office and asked for our three emails, they have received them so they can make comment. We have never did. If you're going to be in this position, you will listen to the folks of Idaho. Okay, fantastic. So um, again, it hasn't fallen on uh, deaf ears or sore eyes. I have read them all. I cannot respond to all of them. Uh, I do just say thank you for your comment, appreciate it, or whatever I can say, but I will not tell you how I'm going to vote. Okay? All right. And you know, somebody else could throw in. I, uh, uh, Lee Zeldin was my pick from New York. That guy, he's a rock star, but he, he was considering it and then he did not. Okay, so somebody else could throw in at the last minute, kind of like I did for this Idaho GOP chair. You never know. Could be somebody else. So, and anybody else have any questions? I want to say thank you. Uh, there, uh, I'm so uh, grateful all of you showed up. And you can always uh, call me about any questions with the rules or resolutions. If you need copies of anything, we have staff that we more than happy to email them to you, or we can also hard copy them to you. So uh, I will be announcing a meeting uh, coming up uh, in the future. And you have a wonderful day, and your Idaho GOP is here for you. Thank you.